Hi and welcome to another Tab of This Glass Emporium YouTube video and I am so excited today I'm bringing you a fantastic new product. I'm bringing you Float Marini. These are Float Compatible Marini at Attack Fuse. Um, they're not so great at a full fuse. I've had some compatibility issues. It's hard with Float. There's quite kind of variance in COEs. Um, but they work brilliantly at Attack Fuse as I can show you in these lanterns. Um, so this is using 100% Float Compatible products with the glass from the original lantern. So you're literally taking the glass out of an Ikea lantern or from wherever else you're getting it from, um, putting your float compatible products, be that if you've got glass line pens, you can use those, enamels, you can use those, float compatible products, um, you can use those. And then I have used some of my fantastic Marini to you know, make it into a floral scene. And that means you can make these, one, you're not using any waste product. You, all of these guys who are always like, oh, what do I do with the glass? I've taken out the lanterns because I'm using, you know, an, another um, glass. You don't have to anymore. You can, you know, make beautiful floral lanterns like these with the glass that comes with the lantern. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make one of these today and I hope you enjoy. So the idea today is we're taking an Ikea lantern, simple one like this, really cheap taking the glass out of it and we're pimping it up and then putting it back in just using some simple products. Um, so this is a really kind of way to use Marini effectively and not use so much of it and really, you know, most importantly, reusing your glass and your lanterns. So the other thing I want to talk about is um, other kind of uh, float compatible products. Now I use these guys, they're based in Germany. Um, and all the things we use to make our float marini from them. So you can use float compatible products and these, these guys have powders, fine frit, medium frit, they even have confetti. So you're going to use a bit of that today as well if I can get the lid off. So um, they've got, you know, really interestingly fantastic lovely products you can use. Um, you can also use enamels, lots of you out there, glass line pens, all of that kind of stuff. You've got them, you can use them, and then just um, and then uh, just go from there. This little lantern was my first trial one. It was made with a tiny bit of this product, enamels in the background, and then some of our products. These, are, as you can see, the one issue I've had with it is that I took it too hot, and that made the panels go a bit smaller, and I haven't silicon them in yet, so that's why it's dropped out. So you do need to watch out for that. But this was done with enamels. We're going to do this one with the float compatible powders. So to start with, I'm going to lay down a background like I normally do. So I'm going to put a mask on. And then I'm going to just take some green powder. And put it down. I'm looking for roughly about a third. Rule of thirds, guys, in landscapes, you want everything in thirds. So that's that. And then I'm going to grab some of their blue. This is a light aquamarine blue. And I have forgotten to reclaim in between my powders, which is very stupid of me because this stuff is very precious and I'm very lucky to have it. So right now we don't have any stringers in float compatible products. Uh, we may be able to make some in the future, I don't know, but right now it's just not um, feasible. Uh, so what do you want to do about stringers? Well, there's lots of ways to make liquid stringers. So if you take some powder, um, you can turn it into kind of a liquid stringer and there's lots of good tutorials, but this is how I do it. Um, I just literally put some powder in here and yes for all you out there I should have had my mask on when I was doing that and I forgot to put it on but please don't send me messages telling me and then I add basically this is the bullseye glass tack gel glue and I'm adding an amount in there I'm not measuring it I'm not worrying I'm just literally adding an amount and just 
stirring to try and get a kind of, I want it quite liquid. Um, the kind of, the, the looser it is, the easier it will, will flow. And I'm gonna pipe it using a piping bag. So anyone who's done cooking and is used to using piping bags, that's the consistency you're, you're looking for. Whatever you pipe with, go for that consistency. Um, and you can use this, you know, you can, you could make these before, tack fuse them on a shelf and then put them on. But you know what I'm like with my kind of one firing wonders. This is a one firing wonder. So um, I'm trying to get it all on here in one go. So there we go, we've got, I'm even going to add a tiny bit more. Okay, now I've got a piping bag over here with a small nozzle. I'm worried that this nozzle isn't going to be small enough, it's the only one we've got at the local shop. Um, and I could try and make one, I tried making one out of this but it kept just falling apart. The um, uh, paper isn't good enough, so uh, just put the mixture in the piping bag like that. It's pushing it down to the bottom, you want to you know, lose any, and then you're just going to pipe it. onto here like that. Now when you get to here, it doesn't really want to come off. So you might need to use a pair of scissors or something just to kind of cut it off a bit. Oh, that one came off better. I'm just gonna do two to start with on each one just to make sure I've got enough and I don't run out. And you want to watch the, you know, the, the powder is almost like a floury layer, so it doesn't want to stick to it, so it will move around. Now I've got a hole in my piping bag. The only issue is, you know, glass is glass. It's much rougher than sugar, sugar, so it will, you know, put holes in things much more quickly than, let's say, sugar paste will. Um, I put a little cold ball, um, I, um, powder on as well because I just thought I wanted a bit more colour in the sky. Now I've got a bit of hole in the powder there. I'm going to use some fritz in a minute anyway, so I'm not so worried about that. So I'm just going to add a few more here and there. Uh, I'm about to pull the whole thing off. Think of it as organic. We're going for the organic look here. I'm doing this quite quickly, guys. You've got longer. Take your time. It's actually quite good going down and then up again. There we go. Um, so next, I'm just going to add a bit of frit. 
for the bottom. So sort of cover up some of my mistakes. Again, I'm just gonna put a bit of jug glue down just to sort of hold stuff in place. Um, I've slightly got to remember that the bottom of the the lantern needs to fit into a um, into the the lantern itself. So this needs to fit into here, and if it's got all this bulky glass on it, it's not going to. So at some point before I put it in the kiln, I need to sort of trim that area off. But I'm going to do that after everything else, probably with a kind of Stanley knife just before I put it in the kiln. And apologies if I don't do that in front of you, because, you know, it's not going to be that easy. Um, so here we go, just putting some green frit on. It's helping cut cover up sort of some of them, you know, areas on the stringers that don't look so great. Also adding some dimension. And you know, I've used this thing with stringers and a piping bag. I've made like, you know, I've, you know the, the amazing different kind of piping heads you can get. You can actually pipe all these piping heads and then, you know, put them on a light tack fuse and they sort of stay like little cake decorations. And they're great for kids for, um, for workshops. Um, they love them. They're like, oh, so really pretty kind of shapes and colours. Um, I've got some kind of grey opal here as well. I'm just going to add a bit of that so it's not just single dimension, it's got a bit of extra other colour in. Uh, now I've got this fantastic um, uh, venturing confetti, which is beautiful. And well, I, you know, I love con you know, venturing confetti from Bullseye. It's just nice to have it in a float product. And then last but certainly not least, I'm going to add some of my Marini. So um, we've got these ones, which are um, circus balls, which don't really look so much like flowers, but I think it's still like really cute. I'm going to put a couple of them on uh, here and there. Um, we've got these amazing yellow flowers, which are just so pretty. Um, these beautiful pink ones. And then we've got these ones are called harlequins, which are kind of bonkers, sort of like a harlequin pattern on them. They don't so much look like flowers, but they're just, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't need to look like flowers. It just needs to look colourful. That's what people like. It's got some yellow ones here. And then some of these darker blue ones. So I know you can get lots of different float compatible pro um, products in the UK and I'm sure there's lots of places in the US you can get them. Um, so just, you know, shop around, see what you can find um, and see what you've got. You know, if you've got glass line, you don't need to make, you know, you could just do your stem stalks with glass line pens. Um, you don't need to use powders, you could use just enamels. So that's the um, Marini on. Um, you know me, I like to do a bit of extra pimping. I've got some kind of pink... Um, rose gold opal so i'm just going to put a bit of that on um not much just a pinch here and there and then i might put a little bit of white on as well um oh that white is a really bright white amazingly we've just pulled snowflakes and floats so if you're wanting to do winter scenes might show you how to do a winter scene later on in the week um, with what we've got. So there you go, that's that done. And um, I think it's gonna be great. 
So now it's ready to go in the kiln. It's going to go on the tack fuse and um, with the schedule for that as it will be at the end as normal with the uh, materials and stuff. I can't wait to see how it turns out. So here it is um, finished. As you can see with the liquid stringers, they do shrink. So of course they've shrunk quite a, little, uh, quite a bit. Um, if you want to avoid this, you can pre-fuse them. So you could literally pipe onto a, a tray, um, take them to a tack fuse, I'd say a low tack fuse 740. Then once those are done, then you can put them on the piece. But you know, I'm the one fusing one that, and actually, I don't mind, I don't mind the fact that these are floating up. In the scheme of things in the lantern, if you see, I'm just, you know, if you literally, did you, because we've done such a, um, a light tack fuse on them, that they haven't, there's no shrinkage. Unlike the first one I did, because I went to a bit heavier, it, the panels had shrunk a bit, but they're fitting perfectly within the Ikea lantern, so you don't need to use any silicon or anything. Um, and then once they're all in, I just don't think you've even kind of noticed that the green stringers don't act. It doesn't, it's all, almost because of the the, um, the colour you get from these amazingly, amazing float compatible products. Um, it also sort of looks like a kind of nighttime scene with the little kind of bits of um, white being kind of fireflies at night. So that's what it reminds me of. Um, so I'm really pleased how this has come out. Um, so if you like this video, please subscribe. And if you want to know anything more about our float compatible products, please get in touch.